Hey folks, just be support here. You're in for a treat because I'm reviewing a new movie this week that's from the director of Night at the Museum and the writers of the Christmas Chronicles movies and the X-Men movies. It's a sci-fi comedy called Free Guy, which stars Ryan Reynolds as a bank teller who discovers that he's actually a non-player character in an open world uh, video game which he later becomes the hero of the entire story and try to save his friends from deletion of this obnoxious uh, ruthless uh, game developer which that's what led to the fact that he met this uh, beautiful uh, tough uh, secret agent and also he hangs around with his best friend who's a security guard and he meets all these other people around in this entire city while all the entire city is being corrupt by all these bad guys who are going around robbing banks and there's even some pretty corrupt cops too but there are also some nice cops to join <laughs> This is basically a combination between Ready Player One and The Truman Show uh, with the mix of The Matrix, Grand Theft Auto, Fortnite, yeah, that's the latest games that, that was coming out a few years ago. Yeah, that's become so popular. And uh, at this rate, they live because of the glasses. You know, like when they put on the glasses, you're beginning to see a world that you didn't expect. And that's what makes it so strange. <laughs> yeah. And what a surprise that this movie is actually getting tremendously, generally positive reviews from critics. And I was actually looking forward to this movie uh, since last year, ever since I saw the trailer. Because I know Ryan Reynolds is getting better and better as the years follow ever since uh, the success of Deadpool. <laughs> of course, before Deadpool, he was doing a lot of great films, you know, like Adventureland, The, the Proposal, and uh, several comedies and dramas here and there that I could think of. And I know he's been in some bad films too, but that's okay. I mean, he's a very talented uh, Canadian actor that you can cherish. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> he was the sexiest man alive, though. <laughs> but he's becoming more of a persona of Deadpool. <laughs> but he's proud of it. <laughs> okay. Uh, anyway. Yeah, th this movie was on delay due to the pandemic, of course, like all the movies have. So I waited this long ever since, and, and I was really excited for it, and what a surprise. I mean, I really love this movie, and this is now going to become, well, on my top of the list of the best movies of this year, and I think it's going to become my favorite film, too. <laughs> yeah. And... It, something you didn't really expect to see but you know it's going to happen anyway because <laughs> it's just hilarious um, I guess if um, you watch uh, Ryan Reynolds' YouTube channel yes he has his own YouTube channel which is cool uh, he actually did his own uh, Deadpool Maximum Reactions and this time uh, he even reacts to his own movie <laughs> Joining in with Korg from uh, For Regga Rock. <laughs> yeah, and he was played by Taka Watiti. So, <laughs> I I know if you watch the their reaction trailer for the movie Free Guy, I think this is going to be hilarious. So you can check it out. And unfortunately, <laughs> we also learned that. The character is now becoming an outfit for Fortnite, too. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and it's now being released um, 
in real D, 3D with IMAX and Dolby Cinema, but it's also released in 2D as well, so that's cool. And then we just learned that this is going to be the first film, while not being access to Disney Plus yet, or the premiere access, or even Hulu's Disney Plus Star, which I think that was uh, overseas. It's now going to be exclusively released in a 45-day uh, window, which I think that's a bad idea because that means, um, well, it probably won't take some time for everyone to see it, so that way it would have made more money a lot faster, like more, more films have at the time. Well, I, I hope this, I hope this doesn't go on for the entire decade because that's going to be a problem. And we don't want that because we want movies to last forever. We want movie theaters to last too. I mean, I'm happy that a lot of movie theaters are being reopened and that's why they should stay there. Okay. And I know I'm saying this many times already, but I'm, that's the truth. Because already, you know, Warner Brothers is doing that too. Uh, even with HBO Max, because of, of their 31 day uh, of all the theatrical films being released on their, their streaming platform, but the other ones aren't. Interesting enough, uh, writer Matt uh, Lieberman actually spent three weeks uh, writing the first draft of the story, but once it was complete, um, it was being sold by development of 20th Century Fox, which is now 20th Century Studios since it was the acquisition of Disney that bought them out. So of course it was one of the first movies to be under the production. But um, Sean Levy, yes, was about to uh, direct this but as he was originally chosen but unfortunately he dropped out for a while. Yeah, he just decided not, not to do this until all of a sudden Ryan Reynolds came and he was joining in with his mutual friend and actor, as we all know. Yeah, best known for playing Logan and Wolverine. Yeah, Australian actor, Hugh Jackman. So they figured, you know, they're gonna start working on the movie together, so that means that now Sean Levy is gonna finally get into this story with the meat and potatoes and and some new characters to join, and new actors, or even actors that are already have been in other films, but they come to play here. <laughs> and even some celebrity cameos, all which are familiar for, the, for everyone. So, of course, Reynolds uh, quoted that he hasn't been fully immersed and engaged in something since Deadpool, so that's becoming a big mark for him because he's getting better and better in all these films. And plus, this was a take on pretty much like all the other stories that we're getting in in real life, too. I mean, with all these uh, games that we're getting, and online gaming and all. I mean, this pretty much sets up like the story of, of what's going on in recent years, too. With other game developers like Bizarre Entertainment, for example, yeah, for Activision. I mean, they're going for a lawsuit because of, well, sexual accusations and all this other stuff happening. And that's been going on recently, too. And what do you know? <laughs> I think I begin to see that in the movie. <laughs> so let's get right to it because it's not going to be just a good day, it's going to be a great day. <laughs> Stars Ryan Reynolds, of course, from Deadpool, among many others he's done in his entire career. But he's getting better and better as we follow. Jodie Comber is a newcomer, best known for her role in a show called Killing Eve, where she plays Oksana Atankova, and also known as Benel. I had a feeling that this character is based on combat. So, I haven't seen the show, but it does sound very interesting. It might be a fun show if you're going to fall in love with her. Anyway, 
I'm hoping she does get more recommendation because this is the film that's definitely going to be the best part of the entire story. Joe Curie from the TV series Stranger Things. Yep, was that explains why we had uh, Sean Levy, the director of the film, was the executive producer for his production company uh, 21 Laps. So I'm glad that he's getting more recommendation too. Lowell Harry, which you last saw him as the sports commenter in Space Jam A New Legacy, but he was best known for the film Get Out. And he was in a short lived comedy series, The Carmichael Show. So, uh, for Get Out, it's the TSA officer, Rod Williams. <laughs> yeah. And here's another great character that you're going to love that's based upon that. Um, American actor, but it has an Indian background, if I can pronounce it correctly, UT Karsh Ambudkar, um, who was in, um, he's also a rapper too, as UTK Inc. Uh, Taka Watiti, as you may know, a New Zealand actor, comedian, director of any kind, producer. Uh, for films like Jojo Rabbit, he was in Four Record Rock as Cork, as I mentioned already, um, as well as all the MCU films, and he's done many others recently. Uh, Brett Oldford uh, from American Horror Story and Asylum and Hunters, which is on uh, Amazon Prime. Yeah, that's the new show with, uh, I believe, legendary actor Al Pacino and and actor <laughs> Logan Lerman. Camille uh, Kostek um, was an American model uh, for Sports Illustrated uh, swimsuits uh, issues and she was in those Reebok commercials recently. Yeah, she's the bombshell. Uh, Maddie uh, Karda Vapol uh, I bet he's been in other stuff too. Uh, but he plays a gamer. Mark Liner as the hostage. I think this is the one where he had trouble putting his hands down. Could be wrong. And Mike Devine as Officer Johnny! <laughs> uh, I just love to do that. <laughs> and it does have cameo appearances in the movie, um, which we have Hugh Jackman, Channing Tatum, as well as Tina Fey, even Dwayne Johnson, a.k.a. The Rock, is in this. But I don't want to give away all the other um, actors who are involved in this, but that's why you have to see it for yourself. Uh, but there are cameos of gamers and streamers, all of which are from YouTube. I mean, I guess you can probably figure this out for yourself once you see it. <laughs> anyway. It's written by Matt uh, Lieberman, along with Zach Penn with Ryan Reynolds producing it, along with Sean Levy and all the rest. And it's directed by, once again, Sean Levy, who did Night of the Museum, as well as um, Date Night, Big Fat Liar. But, of course, he also directed the Cheaper by the Dozen remake, which became a series, along with The Pink Panther, also became a series. Yeah, go figure, so... He's, he's one trick pony, but he is a talented director. The movie begins set in an open world video game that's spread across worldwide, which is also an online video game called Free City, sort of a take on Sin City, but kind of blends in with Grand Theft Auto in a way. That's being developed by Tsunami Games, a take on Konami, <laughs> but its code is being stolen from the game called Life Itself, not to be confused with the Roger Ebert's biopic. No, this is different. It's being developed by you know, two members, uh, Walter Keyes McKee, who's played by Joe Curie, and Millie Russ, played by Jody Comber. Yeah, they're both interns, but they had to join in together, even though they sort of, well, at, at times, I mean, you're not so sure if if they're getting along, or sometimes they do, or, or they just hang around, that sort of thing. 
but they made it into the Game Free City by Tsunami's head developer, who's a ruthless, obnoxious villain named Antoine, who's played by uh, Taka Watiti. <laughs> yeah. But since then, Keys have taken a job at Tsunami, who's joining in with his um, colleague uh, named um, Mauser, who's played by UT Karsh on Buckhar. While Millie just spends time with the game by creating her avatar, Molotov Girl, sort of a take on the um, Jill from the Resident Evil games, uh, cross between all these other uh, strong female character uh, special agents, you know, who often works alone, and she has like a lot of uh, who welcomeries and. Lots of cars and everything that she has. She wears those glasses just to look cool. She's strong, flexible, incredible. I mean, she can do anything. She can do a lot of uh, stunts and all. But most of all, she can even open a portal to go through one game to another, you know, one location at any cost. But she's doing this to find an evidence of the code that she and Keys have written and prove that they are the rightful owners of the entire code. And also to create a lawsuit against Antoine, too. But that's what we lead to in the game where we meet this non player character, the NPC for short, named simply Guy, who is played by Ryan Reynolds, who works as a bank teller. He's, he's like a very handsome, normal type of guy. Very perkish and all. He spends time with his best friend and co-worker, a bank security guard named Buddy. He's played by Lil Y. Howerly. And he's being aware that his entire world is a video game. As we speak, because he almost pretty much denied that, well, he thought that he's pretty much living in this particular world that he didn't expect. But, of course, it's being corrupt by tons of crime, you know, we're getting a lot of bank robbers, a lot of criminals around. But we do meet a lot of friends um, on the way, of course, that, especially when he goes to the uh, coffee shop where he ends up getting what he wants. But sometimes he wants to get something different, but this is the usual. So, of course, it, it probably be aware that this is becoming more like a time loop, just like Groundhog's Day. Which I know that's becoming so popular nowadays because every film is doing the same. I mean, starting with Edge of Tomorrow. <laughs> okay. But well, anyway, one day he encounters uh, Molotov Girl, yeah, also played by Comber herself, who is actually singing this song that, he's, that he actually remembers and, and he loves. It's his favorite song called, you guessed it, Mariah Carey's Fantasy. Yeah, I love that song too. I'm so glad that this movie was carried throughout this entire film as opposed to other songs in the movie and and yes there's even a, ver a cover version by Comer herself and amazing okay well let's get well let's get to the story here was that um, well oh yeah and by the way the, the song was actually um, a sample of Genius of Love by Tom Tom Club, you know, which is by you know two members of Talking Heads, uh, which includes Tina Weymouth. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> but he did say that he was his dream girl, that he will love, and begins to deviate from his programming by taking a pair of sunglasses um, from the player who tries to rob his bank, and through the entire um, world that he didn't expect to see, he wore the sunglasses, and now he begins to find out that yes, he is in a video game that he didn't expect. So now he's beginning to see the player's head-up display, and Guy eventually speaks to Millie, and initially thinks he's another player named Blue Shirt Guy, <laughs> and he's not an NPC. So he realized that later on. 
She tells him to level up above a hundred before she will speak to him again, because he really does want to get to know her better, rather than having to level up through the typical destructive acts, you know, going around, you know, punching and kicking, you know, using all the guns and whipperies to kill these bad guys and stuff. Of course, he doesn't like to hurt innocent people and everyone. Yeah, I mean, he wants to become a normal guy like everyone else does. And not to mention, he wants to be a good guy. <laughs> and not just have a good day, a great day. <laughs> yeah, which is part of the catchphrase of the story. But yes, he has to go around completing all the missions uh, with from Free City to reach the level of 102, during which he will become the worldwide sensation. As players watch the progressive uh, blue shirt guy and then everyone else is you know, joining in for the action. I mean, it's hard to believe that this could really happen from a non-player character. <laughs> I mean, that's the secret behind that. Well, then Millie and Guy met again when she breaks into the stash. Another player's well-protected area that holds the evidence of the source code. Guy helps Millie escape the stash, and Millie recognizes that Guy is becoming a sentinel and believe that he can help find the code within the game world and they become self-awareness that it's it turns out that this one secret original code is actually the artificial intelligent code that this could really contain the personal preference for Millie and as well as keys which actually is included in the game life itself that's where Guy develops a romantic love interest with Millie is this is where they get to know each other better by taking them to go get some bubblegum ice cream and swing on the on the swings and just have fun do all the other romantic stuff that's that are very sweet and now this is where it just gets better and better as the story follows of course there's going to be a lot of cameo appearances going around this there's going to be a lot of uh, gun blazing, a lot of uh, hits and you know, getting run over by cars and all that stuff, getting chased by these corrupt cops. You know, like you had this police officer that Keys came up with, uh, joining in with, uh, with uh, Mouser. Yeah, it was played by Yukarsh uh, Ambakar, who dresses up as a pink bunny suit. <laughs> Well, not since North have you ever saw a guy wearing a pink bunny suit. <laughs> but he was chasing around, he's getting run over by cars, he's falling into buildings. Uh, and he tried to grab this one um, wrecking ball, but he missed, and somehow there's a body bag. And, <laughs> and he says, you know, I can't die, but <laughs> he does get run over a lot, gets beat up so many times, and all of that. Okay. <laughs> well, you know, Millie is going around kicking ass. You know, she's very flexible. You know, she has a lot of referees to kill these bad guys. She can do anything she wants. Doing with her best to actually find a code. <laughs> okay. Um, anyway. After talking with Buddy about the situation, Guy realized that there is something more than love in a relationship that gains full sentence. Guy returns to agree to help before Free City is being wiped from all the Tsunami servers to make way for its sequel called Free City 2 within two days. So Guy breaks into the stash again with Buddy's help. Now being owner recognizable Guy hands over the evidence. Guy continues to probably threaten the launch of Free City 2. And Antron orders Keys and his new partner and his partner Mouser to reboot the entire guy's programming to see what will happen. But Key refuses and wants up being fired from his job. And Antron reboots the entire game itself, which is everyone else disappears except for Guy. But then Guy, of course, is going to become you know, back to his old self. 
and everyone else around them. We're just going to repeat the same thing over and over again until, well, surprisingly enough, uh, Millie has something secret uh, down her sleeve by actually trying to find a way to bring back everything that she owns and hoping that, you know, with um, Molotov Girl that she's doing, and of course, she also changes her accent. I forgot to mention that because um, she was given somewhat of a British accent, although the guy thought it was an an Australian accent. But apparently, she uses her own voice to actually try to have uh, Guy help everything out and see if she remember if Guy remembers everything inside his head. And I know sometimes it kind of feels something like the Truman Show too where he begins to realize everything was all fake in the end and, and it's almost like you know Jim Carrey's character where he's, he was trying to figure out for the entire secret behind this entire um, world that he's in that he really wasn't a TV show but he, that's that's the key here was that he doesn't know that he, he was aware that he was in one because he didn't even know his entire life had been one, but <laughs> well, that was the case. So, at this point on, when Guy finally went back to his his uh, actual self, as as we all saw at the beginning, that now he can find now with his um, actual mind that he has all set up, that now he's he's finding a way to join his friends and to save the entire free city from being destroyed and, and deletion by Antoine, which I know this is where it's going to lead to all the other uh, <laughs> events happening, because once it gets destroyed, that's where we get to see some more action going around. So I'm going to keep it that way, but because I don't want to give away too much of, of the whole thing, because you got to see the film for yourself. And even if I had mentioned some of that stuff, that's okay, because that's part of the story. <laughs> but I had a great time seeing this on Wednesday night. Um, it does make me want to see this movie again, and, and I hope I will. I mean, now that the movie's still playing, and also because it's already becoming a huge success so far, so good. I mean, it just grossed over $117 million worldwide. And I think it's going to continue to go on until it finally hits um, physical media as opposed to digital. <laughs> so, I mean, for the budget of um, 100 and 125 million dollars. So, keep this up, guys, and th this is going to become the biggest hit of the summer, which that's what's becoming. <laughs> because lately, this summer hasn't been that great, sadly, I know. But it's not as bad as last year. Yeah, where there's hardly any movie being played during the summer. I mean, any good movie, but, but hey, I mean, I was lucky to see movies like uh, Black Widow and, and other ones, too. Just for the sake of it. But anyway, um... I really love this movie, and, and I was so surprised how it turned out at the end. I, I was, there's not even a single bad scene in the film at all, and that, that's so refreshing. That's what I want to see nowadays. I mean, come on, you just want to have fun. You want to be excited. You want to, you want to jump for joy for a lot of great moments here. And I'm, I'm so amazed. I mean, you know exactly how the story's going to go once you figure it out, but at this point on, there's going to be even more stuff that you haven't seen yet, and that's where you're not missing everything out. So, I'm happy for that, because that's what we need for the audience. I mean, we don't want to feel bored. We want to have, we just want to, you know, do something. We want everything to revive, everything back to its place. Anyway, <laughs> okay, Ryan Reynolds was just hilarious, as usual, sort of play almost like a persona to Deadpool, and yes, there are Deadpool references in there, I'm so surprised to hear that, 
I mean, especially when you hear through his narration. I mean, that's just it's totally class right there. I mean, no doubt. And he's the producer of the film, so it's really cool that things are working out so well. I mean, he's becoming already the biggest star. Uh, but the real star of the film is Jodie Comber because she is totally beautiful, very talented, incredible. I mean, my God. I mean, this is probably the most beautiful girl you'll ever see. I mean, she, she is a blonde too, but but with the character that she created called Moltoff Girl, I mean, wow. <laughs> with those sunglasses, even when you take it off, she looks uh, totally... Uh, gorgeous. But she does kick a lot of ass, too, and I love that. I love strong characters like that. And those kind of characters, I mean, you're expecting this is going to be one of those typical, you know, like, I don't care if I'm going to work with uh, a male, I'm just going to work alone and all that. Well, apparently we see this as her working alone, but but at this point on, we, we want to see a lot of love in her and and I, I want to see something special, and, and it's great that to see this kind of character, even though they probably say he's an idiot, but he, even though he's not much of an idiot, because he's, he's doing what he can to figure this out. That he just wants to become strong, he wants to be more recognizable, and he cares about his friends, you know, and not only that, but he wants to fall in love with a beautiful girl, especially one that kicks ass. <laughs> and he wants to kick ass with her, like as as their partners. Yeah, I mean, there's like amazing scenes around too. Uh, there's even like slow-mo scenes, uh, especially the one where he was riding on the motorcycle. Wow. <laughs> She's like um, head on too, and while wow, she was like shooting, using all the guns, and, and they escape from the buildings, crash into with all this glass shattering, and as a slow-mo while this music is being played. I mean, this, I think it's a 60 song. But, <laughs> it's just incredible. And there's just a lot of funny jokes in there that you'll never forget. And the lines, dialogues, everything. I mean, this is definitely a feel-good movie, or better yet, a feel-great movie. <laughs> that I really love, and I'm happy. And I was laughing really loud, too, when I saw it uh, in theaters, and sat down on my seat while wearing this damn mask on but I was just laughing all the way through and, and it, it was like pure delight and I, I also love um, Lil Well Hollery, his buddy, yeah he's great I mean definitely the perfect friend for, for Guy um, Antron definitely uh, is a very crazy villain very wacky, obnoxious, but Taki Watiti did a great job playing that role. And all the other characters joining in are terrific. There's not even a bad character whatsoever. And I know there are some interruptions in the film. That actually works so well because it makes it more hilarious. Where you see all these random um, YouTubers and all these other gamers around. You know, they're, they're actually playing the game wearing their headsets and their mics and all that. I mean... Oh boy, <laughs> I'm definitely in for that. So it, it's really cool. I, I just love this movie, and I can't wait to see this again. And I definitely would love to get this on physical media. Uh, I would love to get this on 4K actually, with the Blu-ray and the digital code, and I'll be able to watch this anytime. It would be nice to have the soundtrack too, if, if that's the case. I mean, I definitely love uh, Jody Comber's uh, cover version of Fantasy, you know, by Mariah Carey, of course. And I love how the song gets played from beginning to even at the end. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> it actually brings a whole new meaning to the song now because it is a fantasy. <laughs> also, the scenes where they're going around having bubblegum ice cream and going on the swings too I mean th this is very sweet beautiful and you want this to last for a lifetime there's a lot of quirky humor in there I really love it I mean even with the catchphrases and, and all 
there are characters that are non-player characters that are not just Guy and, and Buddy. I mean, you get this big city dreamer with a girl who just loves to discover this wonderful city. You got the cat lady who's just trying to find the cats. <laughs> you have um, this one guy who just can't keep his hands down <laughs> because, of course, because he's going to get robbed and all. <laughs> There's even the bombshell, which falls in love with this bank robber, and and so much more, as opposed to all the other characters that we got. <laughs> but also, um, this movie had a lot of hearts and soul, a lot of energy, um, touching moments, sweet moments something you can relate to even if it has been done before but that's okay I mean it blends so well with it I mean who would have thought but you're gonna love it no doubt about it so anyway that's free guy and I give the movie five stars I'm Joseph A. Sabora and don't just have a good day have a great day Bye.